So we do have, however, guidelines. And guidelines are at least roadmaps to trying to get from here to there. We have the, the 2016 ACC, AHA, HFSA, I think I got them all, clinical guidelines for the treatment of uh, HREF. So, uh, and in those guidelines, um, well, why don't we start by just simply saying, what are those guidelines? How do they help you at all? And then I want to move on to Evagrity. Yeah, well, I mean, basically, those guidelines are focused updates, so it's not a complete <coughs> update, it's just focusing on the newly approved medications, such as, as you said, Ivabradine and Entresto, and, um, and the point is to discuss the role of that in the HEF-REF patients. Um, what are the recommendations? What's the level of evidence? And so, as you had mentioned, um, one of those is Ivabradine, or Corlinor, and um, this particular medication is very unusual. Actually, both of those medications have very unusual um, types of mechanisms. And so Ivabradine in itself is, is, um, is kind of unique in a way. Um, and in fact, it was 1970s, they developed, uh, they coined the term funny current. And Ivabradine affects that through this HCN channel so the HCN channel is just this hyperpolarized, uh, um, gated uh, channel in the sinoatrial node, which is the um, cardiac uh, pacemaker. And therefore, it inhibits this particular channel. And therefore, it actually prolongs phase four depolarization. Um, and the heart rate actually goes down. So is its main mechanism of action simply reducing the heart rate? Is that it? there is really no significant effect on the blood pressure. So it does not cause hypotension compared to some of the other medications that lower heart rates. But key okay. is that it doesn't cause uh, conduction abnormalities like some other medications that lower heart rate. Um, or, um, yeah, uh, contractility or it doesn't affect anotropic so activity of the it, heart. It, beta blockers are absolutely standard of care in heart failure. And okay. we use beta blockers um, to lower heart rate, but the, the beneficial effects in, in beta blockers, we don't completely understand. I mean, uh, Akshay, I think, hit on some of these topics, but um, there's certainly an anti-remodeling effect. There's uh, the, the blockade of the, central, uh, of the central nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is obviously um, extremely important, but what we don't know exactly is where is that magic for beta blockers. What we do know is that um, beta blockers reduce mortality in patients okay. with heart failure. It's been shown in study after study. Evabradine, which is a pure heart rate reducer, as Cheryl uh, just talked about, uh, has been shown in one trial, the SHIFT trial, uh, to reduce a composite of uh, cardiovascular mortality and heart failure hospitalization, but that was almost all based on heart failure hospitalization. And to be enrolled in that trial, you had to already be on uh, a beta blocker okay. and an optimized beta blocker and still have an elevated heart rate, and that's the key. Everybody is going to be on a beta blocker if, they're, if they Unless can they can't tolerate it. If they can tolerate it that if Vabradine would be added if the heart rate is still too high. Right. One exception, though, Peter, is atrial fibrillation, right? So the drug acts, as Cheryl said, on the sinus node current, uh, this funny current. And, uh, and so if patients don't have a sinus mechanism for rhythm, if they're not in sinus rhythm, the drug has no effect. And in fact, there is actually a higher rate of atrial fibrillation in most of the trials, both in the angina and the heart failure trials, of atrial fibrillation, incident atrial fibrillation, okay. amongst people taking Ivabradine. Because there's no AV node effect at all. No AV note effect. 